and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, a hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hi, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and it's May, which means I get to talk about a new topic this month. The topic I chose is new beginnings. May is my favorite month. I love how light it gets in the morning, fairly early. I like that it stays lighter longer later. And I love that everything blooms here in the Northeast in May. And in this podcast, I'm talking about what it's like to make up our own rules and how I'm watching people around me make up their rules and what it does to my brain. So I have this story to tell you about about using Instagram and how I've kind of bloomed in Instagram, but also how like people changing the rules on Instagram is kind of driving me crazy. And it's not an exaggeration to say that a year ago, I was totally afraid of Instagram. Do you use Instagram? Are you comfortable on that platform? Is that like your total jam? Personally, for me, I was loath to get on another social media platform. I'm a Facebook user and I like it because I find it easy to connect with people there. I love to use it to gather information and I also share my content there. I feel comfortable there. And then I was groaning when I thought about using Instagram. I did not want to learn a new social media platform. I had some negative thoughts about it. Um, It's also very visual and I'm not a visual person. I didn't get how to use my content and make it more visual. Um, And frankly, I didn't want to get it. I was afraid of Instagram because Instagram made me feel like a moron. But you know me, if you've been following me, you know that once I acknowledge my nonsense, I'm generally willing to work through it, which I did. I asked for help. I dug in. I took a course. I had somebody help me. And then I, I understood Instagram. And I want to remind you what Instagram was like in 2018. Think beautifully curated photos of clean desks, steaming cups of coffee, and an iPhone with a set of earbuds attached. You could totally imagine it in your head, right? You had your grid of all your painstakingly beautiful, artfully presented photos. Everything was whites and blues and pinks. Everything is clean and modern branding. And we all learned to make our feeds look absolutely beautiful, clean, and modern. I would say curated is the word. Uh, Very cultivated, carefully. You wouldn't post something that was unplanned or messy because it would mess up the look of your grid. Can, Can you see this in your head as I'm describing it? There were so many rules. You follow them. You win at Instagram. The end, right? But I'm learning that's not the end, because the geniuses behind Facebook and Instagram keep changing it up. They add in new features, they change the algorithms, blah, 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 blah. And so that makes it really easy to get frustrated and overwhelmed by the new and constantly changing rules of social media. But here's the thing. The users of these social media platforms also keep changing it up. They had a lesson to teach me that I didn't know I needed to learn, and maybe it can help you. I'll admit that what I'm about to share with you made me roll my eyes, definitely groan inwardly, but hang with me. I think you will appreciate where this is going. So do you know the generation that's like after the millennials? They're called Generation Z. They were born in the mid-90s through the early 2000s, and they've been using the internet pretty much since they were born. Think about that. They've never known a world without cell phones. Any question has always been able to be answered immediately via the Google. They're digital natives. And what's most interesting to me is how fearless Gen Z is. They have opinions, they know what's going on around them, and they are making up their own rules. 
Today, I read an Atlantic article about how that generation is using Instagram right now. And Gen Z, they don't give a flying flick about the rules. They don't give a damn about curation or staged photos. And they say, screw off to the perfectly colored background wall. They're totally changing up the rules of how to use social media. And in fact, the article cited a high school girl named Joanna, who has 444,000 followers. 444,000. Yeah, you heard me right. 444000. And here's the best part. She has posted a mere 41 posts. Her bio reads, burps, my merch, colon, shopjoanna.com. That's her entire bio. And I must admit, I was a little stung when I clicked over to check out the evidence the article offered. I'm over here offering deep help and good tools. I show up every day with good shit for my followers. And I'm thinking, my stuff can help you get where you want to go. My stuff can help you achieve your goals. And at this rating, I've got 707 followers, and I am thrilled for every single one of them. Joanna, well, she burps posts quirky pictures, wears the absolute unique, most unique clothing I've ever seen, and she's totally winning the internet with 41 pithy posts. And I have to admit, I rolled my eyes way back in my head when I saw this. I groaned a little inside, and frankly, I wondered how she did it. Of course, I asked myself, what does she know that I don't? What's her trick? My brain started spinning spinning, worrying about this new trend. I like my photos. I don't want to wear unflattering clothes in selfies with curt captions. <laughs> I have to say, I panicked a little bit. And to be frank, I also wanted to scream at this absolute bullshit. And then I checked myself and I thought, you know what? Good for her. I mean, I don't even pretend to understand the way the world works anymore, but this young woman is making waves. You know what she's doing? She's making up her own damn rules. And after reading the article, some readers might scramble, like I wanted to, and say, oh my god, I need to stop with my beautiful professional photos. I need to not give a fluck and just start posting pics of me with my tongue hanging out and my hair undid. And maybe some people will be inspired to post more pics in unflattering outfits, in unflattering positions. I mean, I recently posted a double chin pic of my face because I forgot that after 40, it's not a good idea to take a selfie from below. And I got a lot of love for that photo. So maybe there's something to this. Hmm. Well, if you want to give it a try, then give it a try. The rules are changing so fast, my friend. Why not make your own rules? I'm learning that it's kind of the best way to deal with this whole thing of, you know, life. Three years ago, when I left my first business, I decided to take what I'd learned as a teacher, a business owner, and a personal development professor and mash them all together. I looked around and I saw that a lot of my friends and my clients from the fitness studio were business women uh, running their businesses like hobbies And they needed some grounding. They needed someone to say, hey, you said you wanted this. Can I help you get it? They needed someone to hold their hand sometimes and someone to kick their ass sometimes. So I made up a job and I called it accountability coaching. No, I did not go to life school, life coach school. And yes, I suffered a great deal of imposter syndrome because of this. But I kept making up my own rules. And as my business grew, I changed the rules. So I changed what I offered, I changed who I help, I 10 x my pricing, and I made a living doing something that three years ago did not exist in my life. Do I struggle with making up my own rules? Yeah, of course. Like, I'm German. I love rules deep down in my ancestral soul. And imposter syndrome always has me asking, who are you to make up your own damn rules? And no, having two master's degrees does not ease imposter syndrome, but I got my client's results and getting the client's results did ease the doubt. 
does it piss people off who have more trainings and certifications than me that I take action and make shit up? Of course it does. Just like it pissed me off that Joanna totally like is taking what I see as shortcuts or whatever she's doing and doing it differently than me and having like way more engagement than I do on my Instagram. Yeah, that pissed me off. Yeah, I judged her. But really what I was doing was judging myself. Just like you do, I judge myself. And I have fear. I'm scared all the time. And I do the thing anyway. I know you have fear too. Fear doesn't go away. We just learn how to manage it more quickly and more easily. So I'm making up my own rules. I realized that after this girl, like in her Instagram posts, jammed me up. I really had to figure out what was triggering me. She's making up her own rules. And I realized, oh, I do that too. So in the beginning of my business, I was helping anyone with a goal and I watched them change their lives. And I've decided that I only want to work with women who want to launch or boost a business. So that's what I do now. Do I have some life coaching clients who aren't business owners? Yeah, of course. But when I'm talking to my audience, I'm talking to, you know, beginner entrepreneurs. When I need to, I change up the rules to work in my favor. And you can do this too. You can change things. You can change whatever you want. I'm here today to say it is time to look around and decide where you want to bloom. Yes, there are best practices in business. There are best practices in life. There is best practices in Instagram. And there are trends. But ultimately, you have to do what feels right for you in your soul. And sometimes that means changing up the rules making a new rule, living by a new rule that you have created. You know, I ask my clients all the time after we make a decision together, does your brain like this? Because your brain and your soul have to like the choice that you make. And when I ask them that, they know. They always know the answer. They just usually haven't taken the time to stop and listen to their brains. What is it you really want? You know, you already know. Have you admitted it yet? Are you waiting for perfection? Are you waiting for permission? Are you waiting for the rules to change so that they fit who you are right now? Please stop doing that because you'll be waiting forever. As much as it may pain you, take a cue from Generation Z. Clearly, they are embracing their imperfections, their selfness, their selfiness. They're posting pics of themselves in ugly clothes and unflattering poses and weird filters. And I think the lesson here is you get to be you. And how do you want to do that? It's your choice. Move forward or stay stuck. But know that's your choice. Anything else is a, an excuse. And aren't you sick of it already? Aren't you sick of the perfection, of waiting for the perfect moment, of waiting for permission? Perfection does not exist. Make your own rules. This month is the perfect month to do it. It's time to bloom. It's time to start again. It's time to get going. I hope that you have found this helpful. I would love to chat with you if you have questions. So you can always reach out to me at my website, www.jenliddy.com. Remember that I have a membership program for women who want to start and grow their businesses. And in it, I teach you exactly how to do this really hard work. I look forward to seeing you next week and I will see you on the socials between then. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. 
I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye. Thank you.